Hello guys and welcome back to the Tactic YouTube channel again. Following the recent release of the Intel's new X99 enthusiast platform and processors, we are doing our first unboxing of one of the supported motherboard for it, the Astrox Fatality X99M Killer. Although you won't see that specific feature mentioned on the front of the box, this motherboard is really special because of it. If you're familiar with Astrox model naming, you'll probably know that this board comes in a micro ATX form factor, which was a pretty rare sight for its predecessor, the X79 platform. Taught by our experience, except this Astrox model, and maybe few more from its competitors, we assume that we won't see that much micro ATX models with the new Haswell E platform in comparison with the regular Haswell platform. We are always pumped up to see a high-end platform on a small motherboard form factor, just like this model is, all of that features crammed in a small case that you can carry around. Just looking at the front of the box, you can see that this model comes in with a bunch of different features, like super alloy high build quality, killer E2200 network controller, pure sound in its second generation, M.2 support, and so on. Going around to the back of the box, you'll see all that mentioned features from the front dissected into more detailed information divided into individual sectors. Here we have some talk about gaming armor technology, killer E2200 network interface performance, detailed explanations of super alloy technology and high quality components used to build this motherboard, some software features that comes in with the motherboard, as well as a free 3 months of premium XSplit subscription. Let's unbox this small beast. From bundle, here we have a screw for the M.2 drive, hard drive saver cable, two SATA cables, SLI bridge, input output back panel shield, and some user manuals of course, CD with drives and utilities, with marketing material and a voucher for that XSplit subscription. And here's the motherboard itself. Taking a quick first glance at the motherboard, you can clearly feel that Fatality design note in the air with this sapphire black and red color combination. The most dominant red surfaces are the chipset heatsink in the right bottom corner and of course the VRM's heatsink going around the big 2011 3 socket. Speaking of socket, although it doesn't support x79 platform CPUs, the new version of it physically stayed the same, even with the exact mounting holes for the 2011 socket coolers, so you'll be able to reuse it on this platform. All in all the board looks nice as it's really hard to miss with this kind of color layout. Squeezed in right between the socket and the passive heatsink, you can see two RAM slots and on the opposite side two more, supporting up to 64GB of 3000MHz new DDR4 memory. Of course, once that 16GB single DIMM sticks will be available on DDR4 platform. You can see the 12 phase power design right behind the aluminium alloy heatsink, consisting of high quality components like the NextFed MOSFETs, 60 amperes power chocks, memory alloy chocks, Nishikon caps and so on. This kind of power design will ensure clean current and stable and more higher overclocking potential of the CPU. Coming down below the socket, you can see two PCI Express Gen 3 X16 lanes capable of X16 X16 configuration thanks to the CPU architecture and its 40 PCI lanes as well as one more PCI Express Gen 2 X16 slot running at X4. Between them you'll find M.2 SATA socket for up to 110mm module drives running on PCI Express Gen 3 X4 lane for up to 32 gigabits of bandwidth. Right next to PCI Express slots you'll find the Purity Sound 2 audio circuit with Realtek LC1150 codec, differential amplifier, Nishi Confined Gold audio caps and an MEI shielding around them. Right above it you can see the killer E2200 network interface chip. Above the first PCI Express slot you'll find two BIOS ROMs, one of them being a backup and with a dedicated switch for changing between them. Going through the bottom edge of the board, you can see the most common headers, like the USB 2 and fan headers, of which we one have here and the rest of them are pretty scattered around the board, and reset and power on switch in the right corner. 
On the right outer edge you'll find 10 SATA free ports, unfortunately without the presence of SATA Express port, and right above it a HDD saver connector with which you can individually control hard drives with Astrox software in Windows. Basically with this feature you can turn them off and on. Going further around the edge you can see the USB 3 headers, 24 pin ADX power connector and right in the upper right corner an LED debug screen. The 8 pin EPS power connector is a bit awkwardly pulled towards the middle of the top edge of the board which can be a problem for some cases and their cable management. Last but not least here we have the input output back panel. Alongside of the mentioned killer network we also have one from Intel which is a great bonus. The rest of the bunch consists of classic analog and digital audio outputs and inputs, eSATA port, 4 USB 3 and 4 USB 2 ports, two of them being fatality mouse port on which you can adjust preferred mouse pulling rate from 125Hz to 1kHz, PS2 combo port and a clear CMOS button. Thank you once again guys for checking out our unboxing and quick preview of the Astrox Fatality X99M Killer Motherboard. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked our video, leave a comment if you have any questions about a product and of course subscribe to our TechTik YouTube channel for more content like this or you can just check out our other videos from before.